Shalom, and welcome to another Jewish Forum program. My name is Barry Herman. I'm the host of the Jewish Forum, and my guests tonight are two World War II veterans, and they're both active members of the local Jewish War Veterans Post. You're going to meet Simon Lurie of Hamden and Sam Kaplowitz of New Haven. Both these gentlemen fought in World War II. They were part of the Normandy invasion, D-Day in 1944, Omaha Beach, the Battle of the Bulge, just to name a few battles that these two heroes, and they are war heroes, fought for our country in World War II. They were part of the 407th Anti-Aircraft Artillery Gun Battalion, which they told me there were over 700 members of this battalion and about 175 uh, men were from New Haven. There's just a few of them left. And recently, they had a reunion at Simon Lurie's apartment. And this was discussed in Randy Beach's New Haven Register article, which came out in April 2010. Gentlemen, welcome to the Jewish Forum. Thank you. Shalom, Shalom. and welcome. My pleasure. Okay, we're going to start with you, Simon. You want to tell our audience, where were you born? Uh, where did you go to school? How many children do you have? Grandchildren? Just in a few minutes, so our audience will be acquainted with you. I was born April 14th, 1922. Uh, I went to a four-room school. They called it Oak Street School. I went to Scranton School. I went to Troop Junior High and Hill House High. I married Charlotte Fader, and of course she became Lori, and we had three daughters. I have uh, seven grandchildren, and I have just today a 24th great-grandchild in Israel. Congratulations, thank Mazel you. Tov. Thank you. Thank you that's very much. wonderful. Oh, it's, it's a very happy occasion. Oh, that, that's wonderful. Yes. And um, if my late wife was here, she would really be thrilled. I'm sure she yeah. would. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Sam, yes. tell us where you were born and where you went to school and about your family. I was born in New Haven, Connecticut on Oak Street. Oak Street. <laughs> A very famous street. Yes. Yeah. On Oak Street, you had almost every nationality in the world lived in one community. We did have too. Yeah. I went to Zunder School. Zunder School, from named for a Jew, excuse me, named for a Jewish man, uh, Meyer Zunder, who was the first Jewish member of the Board of Education. Right, right. And when they built the school in 1895, they named it after him. That's how he was loved and respected by the people in New Haven. And you went to Zunder School. I went to Zunder School. I graduated from the sixth grade to Webster School. I went to the seventh grade, and from there I went to Troop Junior High School, the first year it opened up. Really? <laughs> yes, in 1925. And how many children do you have? I have two children and seven grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Mazel tov. That's yeah, wonderful. Nice. Thank you. I want to tell our studio audience, uh, Sam, the gentleman you just heard from, would you believe is 98 years young? I, I, I hope I live that long. God bless you, Sam. And Simon told me, he's another youngster, you're 88? <laughs> yeah, I'm 88. Kane of Horror, as they I'll say be in Jewish. in a few days. Uh, 14th 88 of April. and 98. Yeah. Can you imagine? Now, when we, were activated, when we were activated, Sam was the oldest guy in the outfit. I was 19 when I was in, and you really? were 31. I was 30 years old. 30 years old. Isn't we, that we something? Took him just the same. He was old, but we right. <laughs> uh, I mentioned earlier about the reunion. May we have a picture from the newspaper? 
the reunion that was in the newspaper in Simon's house. There it is. Uh, can you guys mention the the people there in the picture? Um, I, I can't. That's you in the white jacket. Yeah, yeah there you are. I know who I am. But and Sam is in I the back, you know, to the right. And, no. and you had Italian men, Irish men, well, you, you, you had all nationalities and, and in that big group. Wait, the most, the most we had were Italian that came from our neighborhood. Right. was the Hill section and Legion Avenue section. Oh, yeah. Uh, and however, when they had roll call, we didn't know if we were in the Italian army or the American army. <laughs> <laughs> but the bulk were of uh, the 175 right. were Italian, and everybody got along, didn't they? Oh yeah, we and were a family. You were a family. We were a family. You right. see, a lot of times today, our young people don't understand that. Oh. But in those days, everybody looked out for each other, and That's, they got along like yep. a family. Because you had you, you depended on one another to stay alive. To stay alive, right? right. Okay, let's talk about your war experiences, Simon. I'm going to ask you. What was it like when you guys invaded France on D-Day or D-2, you said the day after, the Normandy invasion? Just give us a brief uh, account. I'll do it as fast as I can. We crossed the channel in an English ship, and they threw the rope ladders when we reached Todd's Beach, right? Right. You remember coming down the rope ladders and swinging back and forth because the ship didn't stay. And we were happy to get into the landing craft because a lot of guys drowned. Remember that? I remember, yeah. Well, we were happy we got in that, but then we saw the beach and this this was not, this was it. Really? There wasn't one sound in that boat, in the landing craft, not one. You guys probably were scared to death, let's face it. Scared, I won't use the other word. Yeah. But we were scared because... Well, we had this older gentleman. We had to watch over him, for one thing, babysit him. And another thing is that we... Well, you were, what, 31? Yeah. I was well, 30 years old. Yeah, 30. So 30. You, were, you were the second oldest in your group. Second oldest in the entire... Uh, and, second, and you were a youngster, what, 19? Well, 19, but by the time we had our training, I was 20. Uh -huh. uh, uh, we were trained in the Mojave Desert. We had terrific uh, training. And uh, we also trained in Oregon. Uh, and going from California... Excuse me, why the Mojave Desert? We were trained for... We thought we were going to go to North Africa. Oh, to North Africa. Okay, okay. That, by that, that time, sense. things have changed in all Yes. That. So consequently, we were diverted to Europe. I see. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, now, the Battle of the Bulge, that they've had that in movies and uh, history books and so on. What was that like? Well, for one thing, we had no air cover. No air, no cover, air cover. Because it was, it was uh, well, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Right. It was dark. Uh, the ground was very hard. You couldn't dig shit. Uh, it's very, you could where, dig. where did this take place? In France? No, or in Belgium? Belgium, Belgium, Belgium was Belgium. the battle of the bombs. And we were getting ready for Christmas. We were in the Quonset. Remember I mean, it was Quonset? They were going to give us a Christmas meal and clean clothes and all that. We got, I think we got the clean clothes, but I don't the, remember. We got the clean clothes, but it came time to eat. Well, the Germans counterattacked you, didn't they? No, uh, they, 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 they broke were, through. They, they broke were, through. You were pushing them back, and then the, the, they broke through. Well, you know, we were caught off guard. Let's put it this way. Caught off and guard. Our, our, see, we were also field artillery, because there was no more planes. We got rid of the planes, and uh, <clears throat> what our job now was to cover the infantry. We had the Airborne, uh, what was the 101st, I think, if I remember correctly, 101st Airborne, and our infantry, and our, our mission there was to give them cover. Right. Because we had no, no cover. Uh, Sam, you had told me earlier that you didn't get into the battle, you had another job to do there. What was that? Well, they, did, they left me behind. They all went to the Battle of the Bulge, but left me behind. Why? I had charge of all the equipment. In case the Germans broke through, I was to destroy all the equipment. Had the destroy bombs. all the equipment. No, all the equipment. We, that we, we I had the bombs ready. Yeah. You had the bombs ready. Right. Oh my Charges, God! Not bombs. Now you guys told me when I was driving you over that with the, the heavy artillery, it made you both deaf. Yes. Yeah. You, you want to, to mention that to our audience? Well, Sam had it in both ears. Well, what happened is they had trial fire. Yeah. 
and without any notification, I was walking nearby the guns when they fired. That's where I lost hearing. Wow. But you both are lucky you're, you're alive. Oh, yeah. And you can come back home. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Tom many was, of you, your buddies us. didn't return. Or they came yeah, as well, amputees and so on. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know you don't want to talk about that. No, well, you know, we had the reunion, and we did talk about it. And in fact, after the reunion, we, we said a silent prayer, and we bowed our heads, and we, about, about what, 10, 15 minutes, it, to honor the guys that, that uh, uh, the, the worst thing, and I don't think I'll never get out of my head, is when they were loading bodies on the trucks, and all you see is boots, and they were oh. hordes of wood. You know that. Huh? Oh, that, that's sad. And yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll never get it out of my head. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the war ended in 1945. Right. Uh, right. That's what, 65 years ago. Yeah. Now, uh, unbelievable. Now, we were supposed to go to fight Japan. Yeah. Well, we oh, you're going to fight Japan. Because right. we finished the war in Europe. Yeah. Right. And while waiting, the war was over. Oh, okay. So we, now we, we dropped the uh, the bomb on yeah, Hiroshima, bomb. right? Nagasaki. So now the war is over. Now what they did is they made us MPs, military police. You went to Versailles. Each battery was stationed in a different part of the town of Paris. Oh, really? My battery. I became chief of police in the town of Versailles. Oh, that's where the big palace is. Two in blocks Versailles. from the palace. What? My office was two blocks from the blocks palace. Blocks from the palace. I have a picture of it someplace. I don't know where it would have happened to it. Yeah, we had we had uh, uh, hotel rooms, and you open up the uh, the curtain, the, the Eiffel Tower on Champs Elysees. Right. And every morning you see the Champs. And you know, it took us a while to get used to going into a bed because we always slept on the ground. Yeah, and you're in foxholes and so right, on. Right. We, we we were on the ground, and and so you know, this, this was a luxury, and you wouldn't believe it. The first night I lied in bed, I couldn't fall asleep. I went on the floor. Really? It took a little bit to get used to. It was to too it. comfortable. Was so soft, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. Tell me, how were the French girls, the French women? Do you want to make a comment? Well, <laughs> they were okay. <laughs> we we enjoyed their company. Uh, I bet they were glad to see you but, as liberators. Uh, but however, they each village in town, and we went through. Remember, they threw flowers. They gave us wine and everything. And I would, I never drank in my life, but I became a drink, a drinker in the uh, during the, uh, combat time. And the thing that bothered me the most is when we were stationed in Paris, and we were MPs, when they put all those signs all over Paris. Yankee go home. Yankee go home? Yeah. After you guys liberated them from the Germans. Am I, am I, I'm not making this up. It, I, I tell you, it ripped your guts. Of I course. All that crap, and well, you get this kind of appreciation. Uh, that, that's there's awful. There's a re there was a reason for it. What was that? Jealousy, uh, yeah. A lot of the G's and I were doing things they weren't supposed to do. Oh, with, with the women, you mean? The women, yeah. And looting or stuff like that. Like, yeah, like a few bad a there's always a, a few bad apples. But they were doing black market. That was all right. That was yeah. uh, stealing jeeps. Uh, I could ask you guys a question. We see Saving Private Ryan. We see a lot of war movies. Um, how accurate are the war movies that we see compared to what you guys faced in World War II? I'll tell you. And from what I understand, I never saw Private Ryan. I, Okay. I, I avoid. I only once, my family um, forced me to see Pat, but they said that they sent out an outfit to look for uh, Private Ryan. I don't ever remember they didn't do a thing like that where they send out a specific. Uh, I don't know if it's a platoon or what they sent out, but just to get one person. I, I can't believe No, but, I, but I, I was talking more about the fighting. Well, they said it was very realistic. Some of the guys. Oh, it was. I talked to, uh, yeah, uh, I'll be honest with you. I saw the beginning of it, and I think it had, uh, what's his name? Uh, he was a captain. Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks. I saw the beginning. The beach was pretty realistic. It was realistic. That, I didn't want to see any more. Well, sure, it brought back too many memories. Uh, uh, I saw the beginning. I'll be honest. I saw the beginning. I said, that was enough. But what, what, what color was the water? What color was the war? Yeah, the water. The water, black. 
black tail. It was red. Red from, well, from yeah. the blood with you. You thought it was blood the, from, from the dead. Uh, and did you see bodies bobbing in the water or not? When we got to I, the beach, I never saw the bodies. What were, we, were we looking up in the air? I don't know, but I didn't. I didn't see the bodies. Well, well maybe you didn't want to see them too. You no, know? I didn't want to see well, them. Yeah, because somebody said. I know. I know. One time we went to Holland. Yeah, yeah. And they sent people out to get lumber. Yeah. Two guys living in the back. Really? They found one guy hugging the tree on his knees. What happened? Somebody shot him and killed him? They're booby traps. Oh, booby traps. Mines, mines, booby traps. Mines. We lost, which battery did the guys went into a German dump and they got blown up? Oh, I forgot. It wasn't no. your battery, it wasn't mine. It wasn't so my battery, no. A or C? It wasn't no, my A battery. or D? I don't remember. Were you an A? I was A battery. Now, was did you guys have any hand-to-hand -hand combat with uh, German soldiers? No. 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 No, we but, stuck out too. But if, I tell if you. If they ever broke through, we were trained for hand-to-hand. -hand. We right. had infantry training. You did. Because when we went to the beach, we were infantry. We were not artillery because our, our guns hadn't arrived yet. So actually, when they broke through on the cliff and we went in or in, into... Now, what we... And you know that. They... they the uh, combat engineers taped it off where there was no mines. Now, I gotta tell you a cute story. I don't know if I'm able to say it on television. It was raining and we were in columns. Before we left, they gave us hands full of condoms. Condoms? Condoms. Now, I'm, I'm making this decent, though. Now, it was raining. Now, what do you think we guys did with the condoms? So the barrels of our rifles wouldn't get wet. We put them on the, con on the <laughs> rifle, but now, picture this, we're walking down, and these guns are going up and down. <laughs> oh, my God. And we were hoping that, that somebody would take a picture. It was comical. It, that is comical. Yeah. I'm surprised Hollywood hasn't picked up on that. Oh, is that? And put that in no, a movie. Like I said, I was hoping the Stars and Stripes, they were the correspondents and everything. They yeah. took the pictures. and, and, and Oh, that, that's funny. Yeah. And, and another thing is, there was so much shelling in Normandy, they had holes, they were shown, the Navy was shown, the planes were shown. You could put a whole building. And what you say, didn't you see the dead cows petrified? The horses? Because it was yeah. farm country. Oh yeah. And it must have been beautiful farm there was, country. There was a lot of animosity also. Yeah. For what? The fact that the GIs had money, they had food, and a lot of the French people that were in, which is in France now. Right. These poor Frenchmen had nothing. Yeah, so, so and they resented you guys. They resented us, and the girls would go for the GIs. Oh, sure. I tell you, Barry, I did one thing. You know, the kids come up to the... We, we were mobile. We, we yeah. were not like the infantry. The infantry, I tell you, I respect them. I, and I respect the airborne, the glider. I, these guys are volunteers, you know, right. uh, as, as far as the uh, airborne. I uh, always respected them. And... The thing that I, I noticed, the poor kids, when you see, I love kids. We all do. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, they're, they're honest. You, know, you probably gave them I uh, never, candies. I never, food. we had chocolates in our, uh, yeah. our K-rations, remember Hershey's. I never touched those chocolates. I bet, you gave I them to the kids. I couldn't give it to all the kids, but the ones that were near the truck, I made sure that each one of them had a, it was in, in uh, a cube. small piece, yeah. 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 I made sure they got it. I never, well, never eat them. You're, you're both good people, let me tell well, you. You know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's an awful thing to see when kids, their eyes popping up. They I know. They, they, they didn't. Uh, I got to ask you something else. Uh, I heard in World War II, uh, all the divisions, all the battalions, the units were segregated. You had white groups and black groups. They weren't integrated then. You, you want to make a comment? You're right. Now, we would have lost the war if we didn't have the Red Ball Express. What was the Red Ball Express? The Red Ball Express. They brought the supplies in. Well, they brought our supplies in. Now, at nighttime, they couldn't use headlights. They called them eyes, cat eyes. They were about this size. And this is the light they had to get through the woods and, or wherever they had. Now, this was a black group? This was totally black. They had white officers. But they did, they did all, uh, they were the combat engineers. They were courageous, in other words. They were and brave, brave to now, do what they did. If you look at the book I gave you, yep. you'll see that one of the guys that was in one of these outfits 
was Whitney Houston's father. Really? Yes. I gave you the book. You yes, you, yeah. And We're going to keep it in our archives. Yeah, I want you to give it to the, the Afro-American American Society. Yes, I want you to give oh, it to Oh, them. they're going to love getting that book. Yes, and I hope, you know, my, thank God my daughter was able to, she lives in Florida, and she got it on the computer. And oh. I, I couldn't get it in the local library. Well, I'm going to read it first and then uh, I, give it to the archives. It's yours. I gave it to you. Thank you. I, I want to do it. I appreciate that. It's, it's good reading. It's very good reading. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't have that much time left, believe it or not. It, it's going beautifully, our, um, our exchange of well, this is uh, words and ideas. That's now, a very good experience for us. Well, I'm so yeah. glad you both are on the show here. Yeah. Uh, I've got a question to ask you. Um, the wars today, are they being conducted differently than they were 65 years ago in World War II? Oh, sure. Oh, yes. All right, well, you, you want to tell our audience, well, how, the, how are the wars different today? First of all, they got, they got rockets. They got rockets now. Rockets uh, and they, missiles. They, missiles. Their equipment is way advanced to what yeah. we had. We, our most advanced was we, we were radar men. Yeah. Like, radar. Those guns couldn't fire without our radar. Is they that had, right? They had to position the guns. And now, when, the, when an object locked in, that you know you got it. Right. You know? Now, what happens? Well, buzz bombs, we forgot. Now, what happens when they send two buzz bombs at the yeah. same time? Yeah. yeah. On the screen, the radar screen, you'll see two pips. Pips. Pips, yeah. So when you, when you lock out one pip, it goes back and forth. Mm. Mm. So when they fire, it misses. How do you overcome that? You think I remember? I won't forget. <laughs> I know, because I did it. All right. How, how do you do it? I decrease the baseline on the oscilloscope. Oh, yeah. So I only get one, one, uh, one target. Ah. As soon as we hit that target, I increase the baseline so we get the other target, and then we knock that one Interesting. out. Interesting. So this is what you did 65 years ago. Yes. Okay. How, got many, how, many, how many did we knock down? Do you remember? Our battery knocked down 128 of them. Really? Yeah, we, we, we knocked about, them, about that average. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that, that's unbelievable. Yeah, because you got, you got four, but... Uh, you see, we had, we had certain sectors that we could fire on. Right. And so we got them out of that sector, we couldn't fire because we'd be firing on our own men. Wow. We i, I got to ask you another quick question. Well, we don't have much time. The hats that you're wearing... You both are members of the local Jewish War Veterans Post. Right. Yes. How active is your group? We meet well, once a month. Once a month. Yeah, once Roughly a how many members do you have? Right now, uh, attending about, about 12. Nine, ten. Yeah. Well, we but, you, 12 but, but you were bigger. Yesterday we had 12 guys. You were well, yeah, between 10 and 15 guys. In other words, over the years, people have retired. They've gone to Florida. Passed they away. passed away. They passed away. Wow. Which is sad. But I notice the beautiful medals on your your caps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you, you, you march in parades, too, sometimes? Yeah. I used to. We got one coming up. Uh, yeah. The, oh, May, we have to go. Oh, yeah? May, yeah. Okay. I got a car for you. Yeah. Now, uh, one of you, I believe, was a commander, right? Were you, you were Sam? Past, past commander. Past commander. Yeah. The, uh, well, what's the name of your post? Jewish and War Vets. Post 204. Jewish 204. War Vets Hamden. Post so there are Jewish War Veterans posts all over the country. Is that right? right? That is right. the oldest post. The, uh, we're the oldest, we're the oldest the organization Lincoln. in the country. Yeah. Uh, the Jewish, Jewish War Vets. Yep. Now, now, you're also a member of the American, uh, what was the other group? Veterans of Foreign Wars. Veterans of Foreign Wars. VFW. And I've also been a, me uh, been a member of the Masonic Order, Cosmotown over, Cosmopolitan, over 60 years. Really? Yeah. I'm a charter member. So, in other words, you guys were part of history. Right. You made, you made the history. Well, we tried. With the war and, and your experiences. And, and so on. Unbelievable. The young people today, they, 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 they really don't understand what it was well, like 65 we, years we ago. Got, we got some, some of the veterans that go into the schools and speak. Oh, they do. I've gone, I've gone uh, two or three times. And, and believe it or not, the kids it's are really a, interested. They, they love about war, war stories. Yeah, well, uh, 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 times that I went, and I, you know, I, I like to see the kids when they're sitting there and they, you know, they're really paying attention, attention to what you're saying. Now, I'm not talking about kindergarten or 
I'm no, oh, the older kids, sure. I understand it. Well, you know what it is? They, they study the history in the books, yeah. and here they can meet real, live veterans I wish who fought in the wars. Ask questions. It, it was so well, what kind of questions uh, do well, kids ask? They, went, they wanted, first of all, right off the bat, you, you must have been old. <laughs> that was, <laughs> yeah, right. So this is why, yeah, that, uh, that was cute. All, all kinds of Do they ask you things? Did you, did you kill any Germans and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, how many Germans you killed? And, and, and I actually did uh, what, what kind of gun I had. And oh, yeah. We had, we had the M, uh, M1s. Uh, some of us had uh, uh, machine guns. But you see, we, would, we had basic infantry training. Right. That was a must. Oh, yeah. God forbid if they, like we, we had to blow up the equipment. Because now we had tactical. we had to bring a contingent of German war prisoners. Yeah. Oh, you did to oh, camp, yeah. right? Now, could you guys use your Yiddish to communicate with the German war prisoners? Sort of, sort yeah. of. Yeah. It depends one sector of Germany they came to. Some of them you spoke Yiddish; they understood every word. Really? But if you were in another section of Germany, yeah, you, you, get, you get a piece. Yeah. T a tell piece me, meal, you know. t tell me when you liberated France and Belgium. Did you meet any Jewish people along yes. the way? Yes. Yes. You did. Yes. Well, I you went, have a couple minutes left. I went to a service one time in Belgium. How'd you go and I did? What? Your, only your battery? Oh, wait, wait, wait. All right, okay. I went to a service on a Friday night yeah. in Belgium. And while going there, bombs are flying all over the place. Mm. I says, oh boy, no more. I don't right? to Where was this, in Brussels? Antwerp. This was oh, in Antwerp. 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 Antwerp had a big Jewish population. Right. Oh, yes. yes. Now, I met, I met some yes. people. I met some people at the synagogue. And we got talking. And the, uh, in those days, you couldn't send any letters back and forth from, the, from Belgium to the United States. So they gave me the information, and I wrote the letters. Oh, to relatives here in the States? Yeah. So I used to write the letters for them. Oh, okay. Well, that was very nice. But I never went back to the service again. Oh, you never went back? No, no, it was uh, Bob's we, we only have a couple minutes left. Larry, i got to tell you something Yeah. you. One minute left. So, uh, quickly. Uh, one, one member of our office yeah. was Hessinger. He was of German descent. And when we went over the across the channel and says, what are you going to do? You, you have relatives there. What do you do if you kill them? He says, how am I going to kill them? Otherwise, they'll kill me. Is that right? Oh, my God. G gentlemen, I just want to say, this 30 minutes just flew by. Yeah. You two are very impressive people. Because I've now known both of you for years oh, anyway. I knew you were. And, and your, your, your relatives and yeah, so on. Well, but I want to thank you for being on the show. It was our pleasure. And, and sharing your war experiences. And I want to wish both of you continued good health. We can all use And we can all use good health. Yeah. And um, you bo both should live, as they say in Jewish, you should live 120 years. Yeah, but I've got to have my seichel. Your seichel. You don't you're, have the seichel. I don't yeah, if you don't have your brain and knowledge, what good is it? And uh, God bless you. And Sam, I know you're going to hit 100. Oh, oh. if he doesn't, yeah. I'll kill him. You'll kill him. Yeah. If he doesn't, <laughs> right. I'll kill him. Hey, I want to say goodbye. Thank you for being on the show. Our pleasure.